you very much, uh, Your Eminence. Uh, when you mentioned I was a friend of the, this diocese from the very beginning, reminded me of once uh, a student wrote on a paper about Jeremiah. He had to write about Jeremiah, so he said, <clears throat> Jeremiah was called to be a prophet from before he was born. And he said, Lord, I am too young. Uh, um, So I was a friend of this diocese before it was born. (laughs) The Diocese of the South was in my heart before it was born. In fact, I I remember, I maybe should say this tomorrow night at the dinner when it's a little lighter, but I remember... uh, one in All-American Church Council where they were electing a metropolitan and uh, at the time His Grace Bishop Dimitri got almost all the votes. Uh, but however it happened, uh, someone else became the metropolitan. And I don't know if you recall, but I remember going to you after and I was saying, anybody could be the metropolitan. Go down south and become a saint. <laughs> Because they had announced, I believe, almost immediately that the Diocese of the South would be founded. I think it, was, it might have been even at the very council after the election, if I'm not, or the next meeting of the bishops, uh, uh, all uh, synod, synod. Yeah. So it's much better to come to the South and be a saint than to be a metropolitan, you know. Uh, in the old days, uh, when... Uh, Our dear Vladika and I were together doing so many different things together uh, up north. Um, During those days, I was beginning and and, um, uh, being prepared primarily by Professor Serge Sergeyevich Verhovskoy, whom you remember also. Uh, And I'm sure some of you in the room remember him. I was talking with the brothers about him today, telling about him. Uh, But uh, he was preparing me to be a professor of dogmatic theology. Uh, and um, I spent hours and hours with him personally. It was almost like a tutorial. And I feel in many ways my theological teaching is his. Uh, he was very eccentric, very little well known. Other people were much more known, Father Schmemann, Father Meindorf, others. But he wasn't very well known. But uh, I always felt that um, my vocation in life, at least part of that vocation, was to be his spokesperson, his mouthpiece. Uh, and I, I kind of thank God for him <laughs> at this point, too, thinking back in those days. But one of the things that uh, Prof, we used to call him Prof, Professor Verovskoy, uh, made me do, he made me swear. You're not supposed to swear, but he said, it's okay this time, economia. Um, uh, but he made me swear that uh, I would never uh, present uh, my own personal opinions uh, as a teaching of the church. That my task as a professor, a teacher of dogmatic theology, and I can never think of H.L. Mencken who used to say as boring as a professor of dogmatic theology, um, but in teaching dogmatic uh, theology, um, he did promise, almost I had to write in blood, uh, that I would never present anything as my, uh, of my own opinion as a teaching of the church. And my task in, in the classroom uh, was to try to, de- to determine what is the teaching of the church and what isn't, and why it's the teaching of the church, and to try once to determine what it is, then to explain it as well uh, as possible. But even, even there, uh, there is still the issue of opinion, because people do differ in their opinions about what is a dogma of the church and what isn't. I mean, you may know there are some Orthodox who think, for example, the old calendar is a dogma of the church, you know. So there's a debate about what is a dogma of the church and what isn't. But it was a little bit of a, uh, um, how can you say, very controlled thing because when all is said and done, uh, there was plenty of clear doctrinal dogmatic teachings of the orthodox tradition of the scriptures the fathers the canons the liturgy the icons everything that testifies to faith that would fill up more than any kind of number of hours you would need in a in a classroom and i begin by that tonight because uh tonight 
I am not teaching and even pretending to teach or to speak about any dogma of the church. Father uh, Seraphim said that I could pretty much do this evening uh, whatever I wanted. Uh, and he suggested to me that uh, the first night, Monday night, we were speaking with the young people about life. What is life? What makes life, life? Uh, and he thought that I would uh, maybe um, use that same topic tonight, and in a sense I will be, uh, but not directly. What, what I want to do tonight, and the other day some of the brethren were asking me, what are, what is, how was I going to use this time? And I joked with them and I said, well, I think I want to use it to give you a piece of my mind. <laughs> uh, and the piece of my mind in this sense would be uh, with uh, the blessings of, uh, of um, uh, His grace, His eminence, and the blessings of Father Seraphim. Uh, what I would like to do is, is, in a sense, a very simple thing, but a very complicated thing. Uh, and it's not at all... Uh, it's up for grabs. It's, it's for debate. It's for, uh, it's for your own thinking when you go home. But what I'd like to do is just share with you what I think is going on right now in our world. <laughs> and I'd like to share with you what I think we, who are in this beautiful cathedral church in Dallas, what we should do about it. <laughs> So how's that for a topic? <laughs> What's going on in our world? What's going on today? And here I would... Uh, oh, thanks so much. Yeah. Uh, what I would, uh, what I would... I would qualify that by saying what I think is going on in Western European, North America, and Australia, <laughs> basically. What's going on in the so-called Western world? What is happening in our time? What have we gone through? Um, and how should we as Orthodox Christians relate to it? See, how should we relate to it? Now, to relate to something properly, you have to see it clearly, right? St. John Chrysostom in his treatise on the priesthood, he said, if you're going to apply, um, uh, give a person medicine for an illness, you better diagnose the illness correctly. <laughs> Because you could kill them. Or if you're going to do surgery, you better know where to cut. And you better know how deep. And you better know what you're looking for. Otherwise, you're going to harm the person. So the first thing that we have to have is a kind of precise, clear vision, uh, at least as well as we possibly can. And there's no dogmas about that. <laughs> That's charism, that's discernment, that's the Holy Spirit, that's whatever it is. Uh, but we have to try, uh, I believe, uh, and certainly the pastors do, and, 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 and uh, the leaders of the church, have to try to discern the times. What's going on? What makes people tick? What's happening to the people and the people who come to our churches? What is influencing them? What has happened in the culture that we should really be aware of if we are going to try uh, to relate to them. Uh, we spoke with the priest today about uh, the sentence of St. Paul uh, in the ninth chapter of the Corinthian letter, which I'm always, uh, I'm always, Vladika, as you know, I always like to find out, Vladika writes um, commentaries on scripture, but it's always fun to look and to say, where is this read? Okay, we have, you know, we have feast days and so on. Where is this read? Well, there is that, there is that uh, um, part of the 1 Corinthians 9 that for all the church fathers is almost like the Magna Carta of, of, of pastoral, and I would add parental life, because <laughs> parents are pastors, <laughs> um, of not only their kids, but their wider community and so on. Uh, that's part of their being baptized, the royal priesthood we were talking about. Uh, but he said... Um, that uh, what he was called to do was not only to put no stumbling blocks in anybody's way, uh, not only to, to present anything that was non-essential as essential. You know, he says, if somebody be scandalized by what I eat, I won't eat it, and you know, and all this kind of thing. But then he said that he was called uh, to be to all persons 
uh, to bring to them the gospel of God in Jesus. And he said, so to those under the law, I became as one under the law, but myself being free from the law, to save those under the law. To those without the law, I came, became as one without the law, being myself still a Pharisaic Jew under the law. Uh, to the weak, I became weak. And then he says this famous line, I became all things to all people, so that by all means I might save some, <laughs> not all. <laughs> So that I would be, and more accurately, even according to his own teaching, that I could be the instrument of God in the salvation. Because he never thought of himself as a salva savior. In fact, he thought of himself, he spoke about himself as an abortion. <laughs> One on timely born. In the Greek word, that means abortion. <laughs> but he says, by the grace of God, I am what I am. And he says, I'm not interested in, in what you have. I'm interested in you. So you've got to be interested in them, but you can't be all things to all people if you don't know who those people are. If you don't know what they're thinking about, what forms them, what makes them kick. Why do they say what they say? Why do they do what they do? Why do they act the way they act? You know, because if we're not understanding that correctly, well, the chances are we're not going to cut in the right place and we're going to give the wrong medicine and we're going to be part of the problem. Uh, so what we have to do is to try to get together uh, just to, uh, um, to try to say together, do we see with one mind? Would we interpret the sign of the times the same way? Would we see what's going on the same way? And if we don't, then we have a job to do. We've got to talk with each other. Uh, but then even if we do... What do we do about it? You know, what then should we do? And that's an incredibly important question. It was not only asked by Lenin, stop jealous, you know, what to do. And boy, he had a solution. Um, um, but that, yeah, could you somebody give me a little, something a little closer here to put? But, yeah, thanks. Yeah, my hands are getting cold. Um, but as you may know, reading the Holy Scripture, when the Apostle Peter gave the very first sermon on that Pentecost Sunday, when the Spirit had been poured out on all flesh and he preached that the one who was crucified is raised and glorified, when he finished, a voice from the crowd said, What then should we do? Because it's all about what we're going to do. And as we said this afternoon, we will answer at the last judgment by what we do. Kata erga, according to works. That's in the Psalms, that's in the Proverbs, that's in the letter to the Romans. <laughs> you know, that's in the, the Apocalypse. We will answer for what we have done in the flesh. That's what God is going to ask us. But in order to know what to do, we've got to see things clearly. Otherwise, we're like, as the Russians say, Gustumania. We're like geese in the fog going around and messing up people's lives, you know. So... I had a friend, Father Berzansky, he used to say, the priests are ordained to help the people to suffer. And boy, do we do that. <laughs> um, um, but we don't want to help people to suffer. We do want to help them in their suffering. <laughs> um, uh, uh, so what I want to do now, in, in an incredibly simplistic manner, is just tr to try to share with you what I think where we are now. Like what's happening um, in our so-called culture. <laughs> and then just say a few things about what I think we have to do about it. Um, having worked in school all my life, been a school teacher, uh, we're very uh, sensitive to plagiarism. So I just want to go on record by saying, you know, that what is plagiarism? Plagiarism is when you take a couple of people's ideas and you present them as your own. <laughs> well, what do you call it when you take a lot of people's ideas and present them as your own? <laughs> That's called research. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I would like to confess, full disclosure, that tonight's talk is more plagiarism than research. <laughs> I'm going to present uh, uh, ideas of other people. And in that sense, nothing.